Hello everybody. It's a warm, pleasant day, isn't it? Even the teddy bear in the back gets some sun over there. And this is day six, not day seven, of lead code 30 day coding challenge. New problem will be counting elements and lead code said that it's a completely new problem, not something reused. So I don't know it for sure. Well, I know some problems that are not in lead code, obviously. They're on other platforms or just I heard from friends from some coding interviews. From this title, I would guess that we have two sets and in one of them we count elements that occur in the other set. So it's like two set intersection. And for that, once one set of elements, I would put all those numbers in a map, in a hash map to get linear complexity. Or we can sort both and then get of one space with two pointers. Uh, if the statement says to try to do so, then I will. Uh, I have a timer and we can start. Count element x such that x plus 1 is also in RI. If they are duplicates in RI, count them separately. Okay. I will cast everything into set. for everything in array again. If set contains x plus 1, this count is 1. No, OK, uh, then count plus plus. Return count. So we are given one set, and that's enough. 34, 35 seconds. I expected more. Maybe some, there's something valuable in hints. Use, use hash set to store elements. Well. Because of competitive programming, I don't like an ordered set because there can be tests against it. But obviously, to get n o of n instead of o of n log n, we should use uh, sorry an ordered set. And so a hash set in C plus plus loop again to count all valid elements. Exactly. But I can also try a solution without that, where I, we, I sort those. Now, there might be some consecu consecutive elements, maybe 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, then 5, 5, 8, 10, 11, 11, 11, and so on. What I should do is go through such equal elements, 4, 4, 4, and then check if after 4s I have a 5. I will hide the timer because we don't need that now. I'm just proposing an alternative solution for every... Uh, Still, I need something to count the answer. For every element, uh, yeah, that's not, do, I need, do, I, do I need indices? Maybe not. If I don't need indices, then just this would be enough. For every element of the RI, uh, previous element, let's say, is minus 1, and previous count is 0. Can I assume that numbers are positive? Yeah, they are non-negative. Now, if x is equal to the previous number, if I still have a, a continue, let's say I'm at this moment, after some force, I continue with the same number, then just increase the count of those. Else, if x is equal to previous plus 1, so I'm after the whole interval of force, I'm over there, and I see a 5, then answer plus equal the count of the, the size of that previous block of equal numbers. And uh, what, what do I do then? Now previous number becomes this new x and previous count is 1. Else, so if I get even bigger number, remember I sorted first. So I have n log n from sorting, but sorting is quite fast. The running time should be very nice anyway. P previous is x, previous count is 1. I see that those two, they have, they are very similar. I can, I can get shorter code if I say else. If this, then increase the answer and in any way, say previous number is x, previous count is one. Return answer. I will now change anything after that to a comment and submit again. Somebody asked me to click more details, so my previous solution is 
this. We do not have enough accepted submissions to show distribution chart. Well, runtime is 4 milliseconds, so it won't be meaningful. It's so small that any fluctuation in machines or like how you run code, it matters too much. I not see a meaningful difference. But I will submit this again. Now with sorting, and this is all of one extra space. I don't create any more arrays or any other collections, whatever. Zero milliseconds. As you see, this is much faster because sort is much faster than set, even though the time context is the same. And again, I can, just for fun, I will submit again the first solution, but with an ordered set to see maybe it will be one millisecond. But again, don't really worry about those values in lead code. This is not what you should waste time. There is not, this is not what you should worry about. Also, because this is day, I will submit again to see the time, running time. Because this is the last day of a week, let's say, the day number seven. Today I'm doing some, some small summary of a week with harder content. It doesn't even display the time. Just so you would believe me. Oh, not this. Uh, it's not that I'm hiding something. I don't know. My face is back. Do I see some other versions of a problem? Of course, they could require X plus K. They could also say, what about this? Count elements X such that, well, X plus one or X minus one is in the array. That's the same thing. Or count elements X such that there is something close to it. What about this statement? Count elements x such that there exists some other element different by at most k. No, 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 no. This is the statement I'm proposing. You're given a sequence and some value k. Let's try to do that also in just after sorting. Then it would be this. Sort array begin and array end. Uh, and for example, if k is 4, and we have a sequence of uh, numbers 8, then we care what is inserted sequence. We would care if there is something smaller than 12 or up, up to 12. But if the next number is 13 or bigger, then 8s are not good, unless there is on the left something close to 8. For this block of 8, for a number 8, I wonder is there any other number in the sequence other than 8 that differs from this one by at most k, but at most 4. How would the solution look like for something like that? Again, we can uh, iterate over elements. Maybe this time I will remember index. Maybe, no, not necessary. Again, iterate for sorted array after n log n sorting. And now keep this previous value, previous count. This time previous, let's say it is minus infinity. That's denoted as minus inf. Let's say it's a constant. And now for x, I wonder if before that we have something smaller. Hmm. It will be easier with indices this time. N is the size of the sequence. Uh, I'm looking at value array of i. I wonder this. If this is the last element of a block, like this 8, and I'm looking at this element, I will check if the next one is close enough or the previous one is small enough. So if array of i is different than array of i plus 1, last element of a block of equal elements, uh, just to do handle i equal to n minus 1, because then I get out of the array error. If array of i plus 1 smaller equal than me plus k, remember I'm solving a different problem now, or I remember that the previous group was close enough. Let's say previous previous value, um, let's say before me, before me value, 
is greater or equal array of i minus k. In before me value, I remember this one from the previous block. Before me value is again minus infinity. If this answer plus equal count. This is count of this block. In this case, it would be the number of eights a six. Only in that case. And now, uh, after that, after I'm done with updating the answer, if array of i is equal previous, then just previous count plus plus. Otherwise, we have a new value. Uh, previous is array of a, array of i. Previous count, the size of the block is just one. I have, so let's say here, a new element. But also, before me value, it should remember the previous thing. So, well, I can do it like that. Cannot I? Before me is previous. So it's what happens when I'm done with eights. I'm now looking at 13. Then, for 13, I see, oh, this is a new value. Now, previous will be equal to 13 when I move on and before me will be 8, so that I would know if they are close enough. I believe this is it, but I have one more to do, handle i equal to n minus 1, and I will claim that if i is equal to n minus 1, then also this is end of a block. I need to put it first, because otherwise if you check this first, and then only that, you could already here get outside of the array error. Random error. So if this is the case, then uh, this I can check only if i is not n minus 1 and this. Or no matter what i is, I can check before me, value before me. So that's everything. That was a solution to problem given an array count elements x such that there exists some element different than x, different by x, but so not equal to x, but different by, at most, value k. This went for quite a long time, but hey, you get an extra harder problem if you are bored. If you want even harder versions of different problems from this week, make sure to watch the summary of the week video, and I'll see you then or just tomorrow in day 8 of LeetCode April Challenge. That's it, bye bye. And I would almost forget to do this. Bye.